Hello, Ryan here, aka Mac, and welcome. The roadmap has been updated. Let us take a look at the changes. As always, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members. Thank you guys so much for the support. And if you do enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. So let's kick off with some new additions to the progress tracker. The first one is player reflections, and it says, this feature assures the player will see a believable representation of their character when looking into a mirror or other reflective surfaces in first person view. So Player Reflections has 14 weeks work which begins at the beginning of April next year and finishing early July 2022. It will be very interesting to see how they go about creating this as they did say a while ago that they won't be able to just render the scene twice for every reflective surface. If they use ray tracing kind of tech, I wonder, uh, but it would be far too heavy on performance if they were to just render the scene again. Uh, but I am happy that they have figured out a potential way of doing this, and I am intrigued to see what that is. Next, we have Lean Over Cover. This feature has eight weeks work starting in mid-May next year until early July, and it says implementing the tech and animation needed to allow characters and NPCs to push into cover objects as well as look, lean, and shoot over them. Now, I am very glad that they are taking this approach because I really do think being able to shoot around and over cover will be very useful, especially for trying to hold off attacks. So I'm happy that that is intended, but I'm not sure if I want that traditional sticking to cover that we see in a lot of other games as it can be very restrictive and often cause a lot of problems if it's difficult to deal with. Games like Tarkov, Hell Let Loose, those sort of games that I enjoy playing FPS-wise, and even armor, they don't have a stick to cover, they have a good hitbox and the ability to lean or change the height that you are shooting at. So it'll be interesting to see how this comes along, but I'm a bit apprehensive about this sticking to cover, so we'll see how that develops. Our next feature is System Broadcaster. Now this is implementing a system that enables the scheduling of various types of server-wide communications to the player. And this will most likely be used for these dynamic events like the Xeno threat, triggering when the events trigger dynamically. Now this feature has eight weeks work, which starts early May next year until late June. Next, we have destructible environments, which will allow individual pieces of foliage to be destroyed. And this can also be used to populate a destruction map to record data about ecosystem destruction. Now this feature sounds pretty interesting. Of course, it will be cool to see vegetation get destroyed, maybe during a crash or in a firefight, for example, with leaves and plant debris flying all over the place. But what I find more interesting is how they will be tracking the destruction of ecosystems, which will likely be tied into the planets. And seeing areas die off or get destroyed, maybe some locations are protected or we could see species of creatures becoming endangered because of this, for example. Uh, we do know that the Jean are very protective of their homeworld fauna, so that could play into it as well. But it is interesting that they are incorporating the tracking data. I do love that and I'd love to learn more about what that means. But this feature has 17 weeks work starting at the end of February next year until mid to late June. Now there is a single change to one of the deliverables which is the rivers, roads and basins feature. CIG state that the work on this feature has shifted slightly with basins being more closely tied to the work being done on rivers. In addition, the roads feature will be implemented after the work on rivers are complete. So for this reason, they have separated them and now the rivers and basins deliverable has 25 weeks work, which began back in early July this year and will finish around late December. Whereas roads will begin work early November, lasting approximately 15 weeks until mid-February next year. I am very happy to see that the rivers are being worked on this year. Of course, roads will be cool as well, but seeing the rivers on Inside Star Citizen was really cool, and that was before the artists even got their hands on them. So when we see them again, I'm sure that they will look even more incredible. Now, finally, onto the release view. We have Laser Trip Mines Tier 0 that has just been added to Alpha 316, which is the end of year patch. This says implementing laser trip mines into the game, which are explosives that use light beams as triggers. And basically when someone or something comes into contact with the beam, the mine goes boom. Now, confusingly, the work on these laser trip mines began mid-July this year, but the work on them lasts 31 months and doesn't finish until mid-February next year. So how they are going to be ready for Alpha 316 at the end of this year, I don't know. 
Anyway, to finish on a high, there are four Alpha 315 cards that have passed their final review and are now committed on the roadmap viewer. We have Bombs, Loot Generation Tier 0, Arena Commander's Broken Moon Map Update, and the Infiltrate and Defend missions at the Underground Facilities. All of these are now committed, so there is very little chance that they will slip. Let us hope that we see many more 315 features get committed for the next roadmap update in a fortnight. And fingers crossed the next updates as we come closer to 315 and not going to be losing features. Anyway, that is this week's roadmap update. There are some cool new features being added and it is already almost time for 315 to release. And of course, CitizenCon. I am flabbergasted how fast CitizenCon is coming around. It is going to be epic. I will probably put out a video talking about what I'm expecting to see at CitizenCon. But again, it will just be speculation. I will mention that in the video uh, until we get some more official information about CitizenCon. But with that said, if you do enjoy my videos, please consider subscribing and helping the channel to grow. And if you want to learn more about Star Citizen or just hang out with myself and my community and chat about the game, you are all more than welcome over at twitch.tv forward slash Ryan. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind, it does the channel a big favour and tick that notification bell if you would like to be notified when my videos go live. Again, huge thank you to my patrons and channel members for their support. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.